What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm releasing Hyper V4 setup script for Hyperland. This new script improves the install process and adds some new features. Measure units for the waybar. Custom wallpaper. Keyboard layout. Clipboard manager. And a fix to the nasty black screenshot issue on the Nvidia GPUs. All right, let's get into it. I'm Sol and let's do tech. So here we are on a fresh minimal install of Arch. If you need help with installing Arch, I will have a link to another video of mine in the description. So first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that we are in the home directory. So let's do PWD and here we are in the home directory. And now I'm going to do a quick check to make sure I can actually reach the internet. So I'll just ping archlinux.org. Okay, looks good. And next I'll clone the GitHub repository. So git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash soul does tech forward slash hyper v4 dot git. Hit enter and it'll clone the repository. Now let's do an ls dash l and we'll cd into it. Do another quick ls. And here's the file you want to run, set hyper. So dot forward slash set hyper and hit enter. All right, so a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, Hyperland is in beta and uh, this setup script is designed to run on physical hardware. Um, it may work on a VM, uh, but most likely not. So if you are trying to do this on a VM, just expect to have issues. Now that everything is out of the way, uh, I'll ask for confirmation. So if you're ready for the installation, if you type Y and hit enter, it will start going. First thing it's gonna ask you for your password because some of the items inside the script do require sudo. Here we got an option to disable the Wi-Fi power save. I'm gonna say yes to that because I am on Wi-Fi and this just improves the connectivity for me. As you can see, I added um, some indication to progress with the dots over here to kind of let you know that it's still working on stuff so you don't think it got stuck. All right, now it's gonna prompt me if I would like to start installing the packages. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna say yes and hit enter. And this is the prep stage. This is where it's gonna start installing all the necessary packages for a successful Wayland deployment. All right, next it's gonna check for my GPU and it will automatically recognize if I have an NVIDIA GPU. So at this point, uh, it did notice that I do have an NVIDIA GPU and it's gonna start installing all the NVIDIA uh, packages that it needs to complete the NVIDIA portion of the install. And if you are wondering, I am installing this on RTX 3080 Ti GPU. All right, now it's gonna start installing the remaining packages for Hyperland. Uh, this process can take some time. Um, I did, like I said before, add an indicator as to the progress. Uh, the indicator is just letting you know that this is still working. Um, you can see it there with the dots. Um, once it's done, it will say done and the status will get verified and it will switch from note to OK if everything succeeded. But obviously, go get a cup of coffee. This is going to take some time to download and install. For the sake of the video, I am going to jump forward here. Um, so feel free to pause the video on your end if you're following along. All right, now it's going to go ahead and start some services. And then it's going to prompt me with the option to install the config files. Since I would like to get the new V4 features, I'm going to say yes to that and hit enter. Now, if you do have an existing config, it will back it up for you. Next, it's asking me if I would like to install the Starship shell. Um, I do like to install that, so I'm gonna say yes. And uh, for Asus ROG laptops, uh, we have the option to install the uh, ROG software from asus-linux.org. Since this is not a laptop, I'm gonna say no to that and hit enter. And now, since we installed the NVIDIA, GPU drivers and set a bunch of things up for NVIDIA, we do have to reboot, so the script will prompt us for that. 
All right, so here we are on the login screen. And if everything works, I should be able to get a Hyperland desktop. So let me just go in there and type my password and hit login. And here we are on a desktop. Now I do have a little bug on the very first login. I'm not able to get a background image. So to fix that for now, um, just go up to the very top there and hit that little radio button and it will show you the background image for light. And that's the only time you have to do this, just right after the fresh install. And after that, it will work. So if anybody wants to take a look at my script and let me know what I did wrong, please feel free to help me out. I much appreciate it. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the new uh, version 4 layout. We'll start with the far top left. Uh, we have a power button. Clicking on that will give us the power menu, which allows us to lock, log out, suspend, hibernate, and reboot. Next, we have the lock uh, button, which uh, allows us to lock the screen. Tap in my password to unlock. And here we have our different workspaces. I currently have two. Hitting super and the number on your keyboard will switch to that workspace. So if you're wondering how to switch around, super and the number on your keyboard. So if you wanna go to one, super one, you wanna go to four, super four, and so forth. Next, we have the idle inhibitor. So it's currently deactivated. One click on it does activate it. Another click will deactivate. Next to it, we have the clock. Mouse overing the clock will show you the date. All right, next we have our CPU monitor. This will give us our CPU usage. Right click on it, shows us the percentage. Regular click on it, we'll open up BTOP which gives us some more information about our system. Hit Q to close. To the right of that, we have our volume control. So you can mouse over it uh, with a scroll wheel up and down or use your volume keys. One click on it will mute it. Another click will unmute. And a right click will give us the graphical interface for all the audio inputs and outputs. To the right of that, similar, we have the microphone control. Again, volume up and down, using your scroll wheel or your keyboard. Next to that, we have Bluetooth control. So right click on that to get some more information. Next to the Bluetooth, we have our network control. As you can see, I am not connected via ethernet, but I am connected over Wi-Fi. And next to that, we have our keyboard layout currently set to English. More on that in the video. Then we have our V4 controller, which shows us with a mouse over um, all our various key binds. And next to that, we do have our button that changes from light to dark. All right, now heading to the bottom, uh, bottom right, we have our uh, temperature. So this will give us our current weather. All right, to the bottom left, we have a full menu launcher. So just one click on that and here's our launcher. Click escape to close it. Next to that, we have a launcher for Firefox. So just one click starts Firefox for you. And I switched to Firefox because to be honest, it does theme a little bit better as you can see when I'm switching between light to dark. Next to that, we have an icon for Thunderbird. And next we have our kitty terminal emulator. And then we have our file manager. All right, next I'm going to launch uh, several kitty windows. And as you can see in the center, we do have um, indication to the programs that are open. And if you hit the center button, the scroll wheel, uh, you can close the application that way. All right, next we're gonna talk about measuring units. This is something that has been uh, widely asked for. So right now, as you can see, I'm in Imperial measuring units uh, on my clock and on my um, system temperature, as you can see, it's in Fahrenheit. So we'll open up Kitty. And let me make this a little bit bigger. And now let's uh, CD into dot config forward slash hyper 
V and hit enter. Let's do an LS. All right, as you can see, we have a new file here called hyperv.conf. So it's a configuration file for the Hyper-V utility. So let's take a look at that file. All right, so we have a couple of variables here. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the set measuring unit variable. Right now it's set to I. This was set by default by the install script, um, but you can always change it. So we're going to change that I to an M for metric system and we'll save. And then we'll just switch the from light to dark. And as we do that, you can see that the clock now changed and the date and as well as the temperature now shows in Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. All right, next we're gonna talk about um, custom background images, which is something that's been asked for a lot as well. So there's a, a second variable here called setBG. And I already have uh, in my downloads folder, I have a file that I would like to use as a background. So this is the background I would like to use. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so I'll just come back here. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see the background. And I'll just put the path to my file. So this file is in my home folder. So home, forward slash soul, forward slash downloads. And then I'll put the name of the file. Go ahead and save. And now I'll go and I'll switch the light to dark again. And as you can see, it loads my custom uh, wallpaper. Now I can click it again. It will change from light to dark, but the wallpaper will stay the same because that's the one we picked. Now, if you uh, want to switch back uh, to the wallpapers that I'm providing, all you have to do is come back over here and just delete the value. So I'll remove the path, just hit X a few times here. All right, now I'll save. And I'll come back over here and I'll switch from uh, light to dark. And here you go, it loads up the built-in uh, wallpaper. All right, next we're gonna talk about how to switch the keyboard layout, which is something that uh, has also been asked for quite a lot. So I've added this functionality here uh, for the keyboard. So if you click on it, it should switch the keyboard layout, but there's a couple of things we have to set up first. So let me just uh, go ahead and make this full screen with uh, Super V. Then I'll open up another kitty window. And the first thing we have to do is we have to find our keyboard device. So we'll use Hyper CTL devices and hit enter. And let me scroll up a little bit. Here we go. So here are my keyboards. As you can see, some of those are not actually keyboards. We have to find the right one. So this appears to be like my keyboard right there. So I'll have to take this value and place it into the set key, uh, set underscore KB um, variable. So go ahead and uncomment that. As you can see, that's already in there because um, I've been playing around with it a little bit. Let me save. And now let's uh, quit that file. And there's one more file that we have to edit. So let me CD back to my home directory. CD to dot config. Hyper. Let's do an LS. And the file we want to edit is the hyperland.conf. So now we need to scroll down a little bit in this file till we find the input section. And then we have a KB layout. So US is the default. So comma, and let's add a couple of languages, uh, Polish and I don't know, Russian, why not? Let's um, save the file. And now when I go up to my keyboard layout, if I click it, as you can see, it will switch to Polish and then to Russian and then again 
to English. So it cycled through these uh, languages that I added on the input section. And to kind of uh, demonstrate exactly what it's doing is here's the devices. So let's kind of take a look at that. And here's my keyboard that I specified. And as you can see, it's on English US. I'll go ahead and switch it. And when I look at my devices again, uh, scroll up. And you can see it switched the key map for that particular device. Now, if it doesn't work, as you can see right below that, there's another device with a dash one. That may be the actual device. So you're going to have to play with it and make sure you pick the correct keyboard for this to work correctly. All right, next let's talk about how to set up your monitor uh, resolution and refresh rate and all that good stuff. Uh, it's another thing that uh, comes up a lot in the comments. So back in our hyperlink.com file, on the very top, we have a variable called monitor. And that variable is divided into four sections. The first section um, is your output. The second section will be your uh, resolution refresh rate. Um, the third one is your position. And the last section uh, is your scale. So here's the second right here. That's for your resolution. And this would be for your position. And the last one will be for scale. Okay. So um, I've also included down below my personal setup on my laptop um, as an example, but um, I'll walk you through how to set this up. So open up another kitty window. We'll type hyper CTL monitors and hit enter. This is going to show us all of our connected devices right now for monitors. And uh, here's on HDMI A, this is my uh, capture card. So I'm capturing it uh, 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. And this is my actual monitor that's connected to my system. As you can see, I'm running at a higher resolution at, at 60 hertz as well. And that's the position of where the monitor is compared to where my capture card is. So next, um, I want to set up my monitor uh, more efficiently. So I'm uh, going to comment this out because I don't want to delete it. And I'll create a new line and I'll type monitor equals. And then I'll put the output, which will be DP-3 and it's got to be in caps. Comma. And then I'll put my resolution. So 2560 by 1440 at, and then I'll specify my refresh rate, which I know my monitor supports, which is 165. And I'll put another comma and I'll keep this at auto. I'll just let it arrange it at this time because my capture card is not there forever. And then I'll put one for a hundred percent scale and I'll save it. And as you save, it will reload automatically. So you will see the change in real time. Now you can't see it on my screen because it's the capture card, but um, let me do hyper CTL monitors again. As you can see, it's running at 165 Hertz now. For those of you using a laptop, there's some additional modules that will show up. Here is a brightness uh, module, it allows you to control the brightness of the screen. Use your scroll mouse up and down. If you have an ROG laptop and you install the ROG tool, you have a way of controlling um, your speed fan profiles. So this is a performance profile. One more click on it, we'll switch it to the quiet power profile. Another click, we'll put it into the balance mode. And right next to that, uh, you'll have your battery module, which um, kind of gives you indication of how much battery you have and how much time is left on battery. All right, now if you wanna keep your system up to date, uh, there is a module right next to the clock that kind of shows you how many updates are available to download. All you have to do is click on it and that will launch another kitty window. 
Uh, let me just resize this window. Then type in your password and hit enter. And as you can see, there are some updates. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go and download and install these updates. And when it's done, it will close the window. All right, and the last item I want to talk about is uh, Clipboard Manager, something that's also been asked for. So I'm going to launch uh, Firefox. And I'll launch Kitty. And let's go to archlinux.org. Now I'll grab some text and uh, copy it using uh, Control C. Or right click and copy. And let me copy uh, this command over here. All right, now back in my kitty window, if I go ahead and try to paste, you'll see I'll only paste the last command I copied. So now if I use Alt V, I get my clipboard manager and I'll pick the first one. So just double click on it. And now when I try to paste, it will have that value in it. And there really isn't any any limit on this. I mean, you can copy multiple things and then just use Alt V and you can select the various things you copied into the manager. Now, um, if you need to clear this out for any reason, just use clip heist and the wipe command. And if I bring it up again, you'll see it'll be empty. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please consider hitting the like button. If you got any value from this content, please consider subscribing. At the time of making this video, the channel hit over 2000 subscribers. Thank you for everyone who subscribed. I appreciate it very much. Your support allows me to continue on bringing you these videos. Thanks again, guys. I'm Sol signing off and wishing you a wonderful rest of your day.